What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the Quantum Resistant Ledger channel, your video portal into post-quantum digital asset security. I am your co-host, Ryan. I am the Director of Advocacy here at the QRL, and we are joined by the other co-host, Strike, who is the Director of Outreach for the QRL. And in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit different format. It's kind of going to be a smorgasbord, so to speak, where we're going to be jumping between a few different topics. It's gonna be Q&A style, where I am asking Strike a question, and it's gonna be a little bit more framed today from a little bit less technical viewpoint. And the intention behind today's video is the QRL project, there's a lot of technical intricacies to the project. So when someone comes on board and they're trying to decide, hey, uh, why should I care about the project today? What is the project all about? Our job is to try to break down the technical aspects of it so that it's more digestible to a wider audience. So in today's video, we're going to dive through a number of questions and uh, just kind of provide some answers there. So Strike, is it cool with you if we dive into some uh, questions and uh, provide a little bit of insight for the community? Looking, Looking forward, forward to, it. to it. Shoot, shoot. Sounds good. Well, uh, the first question is uh, one that is, I've heard this from members of the community and just you know people in general that have shown an inkling for the project, but I'll make up and paint a fictional scenario. If let's say somebody is a blockchain enthusiast, maybe they're involved in a few projects, hold a decent variety of crypto, maybe a little bit of uh, ETH, Bitcoin, and then obviously some altcoins. But why should QRL matter to them today? Not in two years, not in five years. Why should QRL matter to them today? Sure. So that's a, I mean, that's a really good question. So there's uh, uh, at any point in time, there's a lot of emergent technologies that are coming out. And one of the, I would say, one of the most interesting Emergent technologies is this concept of a quantum computer. Now, quantum computers have been talked about for decades, um, and they have a you know they have a long hist they have quite a bit of a long history. Um, you know, in quantum mechanics itself, it goes back 110, 120 years or so with Einstein and Bohr's, but uh, Niels Bohr. But um, the re I mean, the reason it's relevant nowadays is the encryption the encryption that we use for the internet, for banking transaction. It's a trustless form of encryption called asymmetric encryption. And this is all based on something called factorization, which is being able to find, take a large number and find the two factors or integers that make it up. And the reason this is relevant is because quantum computers have the, a sufficiently powerful quantum computer has the ability to break this. And all, I would say 99.9% of all blockchain technology is built around this asymmetric encryption. And, and if you look at, so if you look at your degree of exposure, and let's say you have a portfolio, and I think in your example, you said we had someone that already has Bitcoin, maybe some other altcoins. If you even think that there's a 1% chance or a 2% chance that this could be a real thing, you know, that these quantum computers do pose a threat, it seems appropriate to possibly hedge your digital assets partially in that direction. You know, that one or 2%, that's, that's probably, I would describe them as probably a quantum pessimist versus an optimist. You know, everyone at the QRL, um, we consider ourselves uh, uh, optimistically speculative about quantum technology. Um, so, you know, obvious disclaimer that None of that's financial advice. These are just my opinions. Uh, but uh, I, I think that's why I think that's why it's relevant. In particular, with quantum computers, the threat is the the implications of the technology make me want make me wonder at times if we really really know what's going on. You've got companies like IBM and Honeywell, um, D Wave, D Wave, and IBM have commercially available machines already. Um, they cannot. They're not able to factor in, or, or break any of the modern encryption, uh, public key encryption or asymmetric encryption today. But if you look at the progress that's being made, um, 
it's 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 increasing what appears to be exponentially. I mean, you're getting news every now, whereas you used to get news every few weeks, you know, years ago. You're getting news every day or every other day nowadays. Um, so it's really an interesting thing to, I would say, keep your eye on. Um, and here at the, you know, here at the, uh, at the, on the QRL team here, we're here to provide quantum protection, you know, digitals, you know, uh, digit for digital asset security to anyone that wants it. Awesome. Yeah. Now, kind of a follow up on that question of kind of, you know, why should it matter to me today? What are some things for anyone, regardless of where they kind of lie in the spectrum? Obviously, that people that are a little bit further along, a little bit down the, the rabbit hole, they're going to be able to do a little bit more. They're going to understand it um, from a technical level. But what are some things that, regardless of where you are on that spectrum, how should you be being proactive about it? And what are maybe a few steps that we could be taking today um, to uh, where the quantum impact, like how it would have on me, like what are some things that we can do to be proactive? So I can only speak to what I do. Yeah. Um, and what I do is I pay attention. If you look at some of uh, some of our in, some industry leaders, uh, Jeff Bezos, Sir Richard Branson, and there's some others that do this, they follow this school of thought called ABCD. And what that simply means is always connecting the dots. And this is a form of intuitive thinking, which means you see data point here, you see, you know, a uh, uh, data point here, you see, a, you see a data point here. And then you start to see correlations and things and patterns that are happening. And when you're able to do that, it does, it does give you a little bit of a, I would say a statistical prediction model in your head. Granted, very subjective, you know, it depends on how people think, but this is something I do all the time is trying to be able to see, I'm paying attention. I'm looking at where the industry is going and, you know, I, I'm taking out the noise and, you know, trying to separate everything on the web that's, you know, um, that's monetarily driven or advertising and, and just trying to pay attention to the facts. So uh, what I would recommend to, you know, uh, viewers out there is pay attention, do your own research, come to your own conclusions. This is a complex topic, sure, but you also have a sense of intuition that you can use to help guide yourself. Um, and right now, right now, respective to quantum computers, we're still very early in the technology. Um, but at the same time, look at the amount of news that is coming out. Look at what Look at what Honeywell is claiming. Look at what IBM is claiming. And then consider for a moment what may, may exist uh, like an iceberg. You know, you have the top part of the iceberg, which is, you know, smaller. And then you have the ballast, you know, at the bottom, everything that's under the water that you can't see. How much do we really know about what's going on? And they, these, are, these right here are my personal opinions. But I think that the, I just have a suspicion that the real progress that's being made is the one that's being kept, is the progress that's being really kept close to the chest. And yeah. The, some of that might be some of the big players. We, we really don't know. So ask yourself, what is your, what is your exposure? What's your risk? What's your risk? Your yeah, that's tolerance. a great answer. And uh, yeah, if only the Titanic knew about the, uh, the whole size of the iceberg, that <laughs> would have made a big difference. But diving into a different area in, I think it was episode number seven, you briefly touched on what is called Niven's Law. And we all are very familiar in tech about what Moore's Law is and that the number of transistors on a microchip doubles every couple of years. And obviously, this gets applied to a lot of different areas of technology. But could you maybe dive in for just a, briefly for a few minutes on what Niven's Law is and uh, just kind of you know cover what that is because I think it's important to dive into uh, related to what we're talking about. So that's a really good question as well. Um, so Hartmut Nevin is a researcher over at Google. Uh, he does uh, artific he does study with artificial intelligence. He works with quantum computers, and he's involved with he's involved with the Google's Quantum Initiative. And in 2018, he began to notice that he needed to be asking more for more and more processing power in order to equate it or compare it to the quantum processor that they were building. And what we all know Moore's law, for example, you said it's every 16 months or every two years. I think there's a little bit of variability there in how you interpret it, uh, but um, integrated circuitry. Uh, I've, I've, heard, I've seen it applied to hard drives magnetically and integrated circuitry as well, but essentially computer power doubles or storage doubles depending on who you talk to. But 
Nevin's law is instead of being exponential, it's doubly exponential, which means power to the power of two, which if you have a exponential curve, you know, it's that old, some of you, I don't know if you're like me, you may have it when you were younger, you may have tried to talk your dad into st instead of giving you $5 allowance a week, you just start with a penny and the next week, two pennies and four pennies and eight pennies. I tried that. He's smart. It didn't work. But we know that the power of exponent, you know, the powers of exponentials goes up like this, right? Goes up very, very quickly. And then the doubly exponential actually goes up much, much steeper. So this is an early, it's not a law. It's it, per se, it's not, it's not a guarantee. It was something that's been proposed as an observation that Hartman made. And I think it's, I think it's, I, I think it's really, really interesting to consider. Um, and it's also, that's just based on the processing power of the quantum CPU. We're not, that doesn't take into consideration uh, advances that are being made with uh, uh, algorithms for uh, factorization. Uh, doesn't make, doesn't take into consideration uh, manufacturing uh, improvements uh, for uh, quantum processes. That quantum processes they're able to stay into superposition for longer periods of time. Um, it doesn't take into consideration any of that. And honestly, even if it's only 10% true, you know some of these things. And you know that just gets back to what level of risk are you comfortable with as far as digital assets? So awesome. Yeah. Now, you, you briefly mentioned in the last few sentences, uh, superposition, and I think this is an important one to dive into. And I think this is one that a lot of people, it's really hard for them to wrap their head around. Uh, if we use like a fictional example of someone that maybe is not tech savvy at all, let's say I'm explaining to, uh, I don't know, Uncle Frank, he used a smartphone until last year when he no longer could use, uh, he no longer could get service. But uh, Picture Frank is like a, a very laggard when it comes to adopting uh, technology. And right here I have uh, a, a five francs uh, coin from the 90s. And it's pretty easy if I explain or you explain to anyone what binary is. Of, okay, zero and one, you flip it, lands heads, lands tails. But could we dive in just for a few minutes on what superposition is and just kind of laying it out so that, you know, really we can digest it in a, in a way that we could then explain it to, to other people um, and sound a little bit knowledgeable. Sure. So as you said, uh, most people are aware of binary code, right? Zeros and ones that make up, you know, eight bits to a byte makes up fundamental, is a fundamental uh, construct of classical computers operate. Quantum computers are completely different. They don't look alike. They don't look like cl classical computers. They don't behave like them. Um, they're, I would, I would, I, I would say that they're much more dissimilar than they are similar. So we know what a we know what a bit is, a zero or a one. Uh, but what's a, you know what's a qubit? What's a quantum bit? If you were to picture a coin, or uh, if you were to picture let's picture it a bit. A bit can be thought of as a coin lying on the table, heads up or tails up, right? A qubit, picture the coin, instead of lying down, it's spinning, okay? And that coin is in a, that coin is considered to be in a state of superposition. And what this means is you may have heard of, uh, in, back in school in physics class, you might have heard of uh, light in the wave, or the wave slash particle duality, and a lot of this goes back 100 years. Obviously, is light a wave? Is it a, is it, does it behave like a wave or does it behave, you know, like a particle? Well, it turns out, it, as it turned out, most, you know, we, we know that, we know that it, it was both. Um, uh, it, there's this observer effect that, that once you measure it, it, the coin essentially falls over and you find out what it was. But up until it's observed or looked at, it, actually exists in a state of all possibilities. So what this means is you have a classical computer, you have a coin line on the table, it's heads up or let's just call it heads up or tails up. With a quantum bit, it's spinning. And what happens is a quantum computer is, is able to, uh, uh, a quantum computer is able to apply what's called a quantum Fourier transformation. And what that means is it's it's coercing the coin into 
to fall into the position based on the algorithm that you're running in order to probabilistically give you the answer that you want. So that means you'll probably get the answer that you want. They're not, they're not perfect. They may never be, we don't know, but it, it, co it coerces that coin to fall to give you the answer based on the algorithm. And there's also other things like entanglement and other components of quantum computers. They're probably not, they're definitely outside of scope. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's as far as a simple explanation, that's as simple as I think I can make it. <laughs> there's a awesome. lot of videos out there that, that do explain this in a little bit more detail. And if you're really interested, I definitely would at least recommend looking up uh, Young's double slit light experiment. Awesome, no, thanks, appreciate it. And uh, the last question uh, for, Today's show is one that kind of relates to the first part of what we were talking about with why should QRL matter to me today? And this kind of ties to the quantum threat. And I think this is a really good last question to dive into because I think this is something that myself, yourself, uh, the other members, core contributors for QRL and the community as a whole is how, how, what are a few scenarios of how the quantum threat plays out? Obviously, we are not a genie, we do not have an exact timetable, but what are a few various scenarios and first off, what do they you know, potentially look like and how could they potentially affect us? I think this is both a, a, a real realistic question you know, of scenarios and just a fun question because obviously we don't know the exacts on it. <laughs> oh man, how could this play out? Um, you know, I... <laughs> Back to my iceberg analogy, I think that there's more, this is my opinion, um, others may or may not share it, you know, uh, this is quantum, quantum computing is a hotly debated field. Um, it can, I've seen it um, take, you know, very intelligent people and polarize their, you know, polarize them in completely opposite directions. But how do I personally think it will play out? I think that there's more happening behind the scenes than it's what, than what, than what's publicly visible if I had to guess not saying for sure um, and that that makes me think um, there's also we have most most quantum computers nowadays the industry right now is looking for what is going to be uh, um, uh, the best practice for building a quantum computer and right now it seems to be this ion trapping method um, but there's also this, if you look up, there's also another type of computer. It's a photon, photonic computer that uses lights, which, at, which can operate at, you know, which operates closer to room temperatures. Um, and there's a lot of mystery <laughs> behind trying to figure out exactly what these photonic quantum computers can do. Um, and when I see things operate, you know, without a lot of media exposure and that it seemed to be playing under the radar a little bit, you know, it makes me think a little bit more. Um, I mean, you, like I said earlier, you have the you have the commercially available ones by you know uh, um, D Wave and IBM, and I think Honeywell started renting out their quantum computers somewhere thousand dollars an hour or something like that. Uh, but as far as how it plays out, I think it could be sudden. Um, I there's this whole part that we just don't know. Um, all we see is what's in the news and what's commercially available. Um, but if I had to guess, I don't think you won't see a quant I don't think you'll see a quantum computer mining bitcoins. The problem with that is any proof of a quantum computer interfacing with the blockchain would quite quickly undermine confidence in the in blockchain as a whole. Um, and I'm pretty sure that would you know that would translate over to altcoins in the entire space. Um, Ha, you know, uh, hash rates, locations of miners, these things are really well monitored in the crypto community. Um, you would want, if, if someone were to, if someone were to use a quantum computer against uh, blockchain technology, they would do so under the radar in some way so as to be there maybe through a slow siphoning process and to remain undetected, probably distributed, you know, it across multiple altcoins in order to further make it look like um, you know, like uh, 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 so, something that's, you know, just to further disguise the approach. So I, I really don't know. It's a good question. You know, time will tell. Um, I, that's the best I got. <laughs> awesome. No, I appreciate it. It's kind of a, it's kind of one of those ones that we, we and the members of the community can probably, you know, discuss on, you know, what we're, our angle is for, for hours and hours. So 
Um, over the next coming videos and shows, um, one of the main things we're going to be doing is diving into kind of a, an assortment of topics. Sometimes we're going to, you know, stick down, go down a lane and go a little bit more deeper, um, not as much jumping around. But today's was a little bit more um, less technical, explaining things a little bit, but it's all with the intention of making the QRL uh, more understand understandable and digestible for a wider audience. And make sure um, coming up, we're going to be doing some good videos coming up for the move to uh, POS and also some exciting news with Enclave coming up. Make sure that in order for you to be able to be kept notified and abreast about that, make sure that everyone subscribes to the channel if you have not already. And uh, myself and Strike, we look forward to uh, bringing valuable content. What we're also going to be doing is we are going to be taking actual questions from the community. Today, we took a few questions from the community, but we kind of put more of a broad spin on it. But for a few upcoming videos, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be taking exact questions from Telegram, from Discord, et cetera, and we're going to be asking them live in upcoming videos. So make sure that you tune in and make sure that you're you're asking um, questions there that could be applicable to a wider audience to be able to dive into. And until next video, myself and Strike, appreciate you watching this, and we will see you on the next show. Have a great Thanks, rest of the day.